So glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire, and today I have an edited, shortened replay of a live that I did a few days ago. Now, this was a longer live because I had three pretty involved cards that show variations of doing a pop-up window card, or what can also be called a swivel card. I share so many tips and tricks in that long video. However, I know that some of you like to watch something a bit shorter, so that's what I have here. Because this is edited from a live replay, the editing isn't like on my normal, regular pre-recorded videos, but I still think you'll be able to follow along and be able to create three fun cards. And by the way, if you're watching this and want to learn more about a particular part of the video, be sure to check out that live longer replay. Now, the products I use today are from Pink Fresh Studio, but keep in mind you can do this with other these techniques with other supplies. Pink Fresh does have an exclusive 15% off site-wide discount code for my viewers that is good for a few days after this video. I will have that information in the description below. Okay, let's get started with these cards. So today I am just playing with some older products. I am using um, Pink Fresh Studios today. Pink Fresh has been a longtime favorite of mine. I have used their products for many years in many, many videos. And actually, I think everything I'm using today, I've used in videos in the past. And if you don't know, you can go to my website. Let me, at the top, you'll see uh, galleries right along the top there's a button that says galleries and under that you can look uh, you can search in all the cards I've ever done in the card gallery or you can search in all the videos I've done in the video gallery and you can search by techniques themes or by companies so you could go in there and you know pick either the card gallery or the video video gallery pink pick pink fresh studios and lots of those projects will come up including many projects that um, use the products that I'm using today. So I just thought I'd reach back and grab some older stuff. I just wanted to mention at the top of my description, you'll see a link it's right at the top of the description. If you click that and open it in another window, you can see thumbnails of all the products I'm talking about and that description. So that might be helpful to refer back to. Um, so it's just something that a lot of people like that visual. So I thought I would offer that too. So that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do um, kind of a spin on some of the really fun pop-up window cards that I've done in some videos in the past. I used it, I did this in a live once, but kind of in a basic way. So I thought I would kind of step it up and show more ways of doing this because it's something you can do with a lot of products. So I'm gonna get started with my first card. I'm gonna show it to you first, just so you could know where we're headed with the technique. So I'm gonna switch over to the overhead. So this is the card we're gonna do, and surprisingly, it's not super complicated, believe it or not. So when it's closed, you can see you have lots of gold shine. You can see the foil on there, which we don't even need a foil machine for, and then the gold frame, and when you open it up, that element pops up, and there's plenty of room to write a personal message. So it, you can see that sentiment when the card is open or closed. And it stands nicely on display. Now I've done a variation of this particular kind of pop up in a previous live. So I'm gonna start with this one, but then I'm gonna to switch to like a side pop off, a pop up. So when you open to the side, it pops up and I'll also do a five by seven card. And then I also have like an offset pop up. So this is the basic one that I thought I would start with too, okay? So the first thing I need to do is create all of these elements here. And I thought I would use product. I don't even think I've used these in a video but I use them a lot off screen because they're super fast to use. So this is the Pink Fresh, how do you, Tubros? Is that how you say that? This set, oops, this should be down here. This set is a long stamp set. So this is like almost 12 by four stamp set. And you see all of the images here, all of those are connected. That way you stamp them all at once and then you can die cut them all at once. See how it lines up? There's also a, um, a die for the two sentiments down here is the layering stencils that color in this image. So you can stamp with this and then you can 
line up each of the stencils and color them. So it allows you to color all those very quickly. Now these are all sold separately so you can pick and choose like what appeals to you. So there's the stamps, the stencils, and then there's dies. But what's even better and something that's really unique that Pink Fresh does is they have this washi tape that coordinates with these products. So if you don't want to stamp and stencil, you can use this, look at this. It's a big roll of washi tape. And what I do is I just put it down onto white cardstock and take this little, I had this little ending piece on here so that I wouldn't um, have problems with uh, catching the end again. So you just spread it out onto white cardstock. And then I'm going to cut off here at the top. Now this I leave right here. I leave this piece of cardstock here because it's kind of, it's something that I can grab onto next time I go to use this. So I don't have to fish for the end. So basically this is giant washi tape that you can stick down on the cardstock. I think it's a little bit stickier than regular washi, but another thing you can do, and I probably won't take the time to do this in uh, the video, is you can put this along the back of your card or a back of your envelope. So say you make an, a card, you put the card in there, mail, uh, put the address in the front, you can put this along the back or you can put it like along the flap of the envelope and trim off the excess. So a lot of you can do with it. And the nice thing is, I don't know how many, like how many times you can use it, but you can you can see there's a lot on that roll. And the neat thing is, um, let's see if you can see it. Do you see that it's foil outline? So there's shine to it, beautiful, beautiful shine. And it looks like it's watercolor. And as all you know, watercolor is something that I'm still working on. So I think it's fun that it gives me that look very easily. I'm gonna tape this in place. Now the reason I'm taping this and not just relying on the magnetic mat on my um, die cut machine is because I'm gonna have to run it through in two. Now, if you use like a Spellbinders Platinum, you could definitely um, use the, I'll show you, let me show you. Like their cutting plates are long enough. No, that's the wrong Oh, the cutting plates are long enough so you could run it through in one pass. But if you have like the Gina K Intracut or like, um, the Empress, which is what I'm using here, you can see the this die is too big for it. So what I do is I put it down with part of it hanging off the bottom and I'll run that through. Sorry for the noise here. Um, so yeah, these this washi tape, they have several collections. In fact, in the description, I have a link to all of their washi tape collection, um, but they've got a bunch of other ones. And I'll, I'll show you a few that I went ahead and cut just to show examples. Now, so I've cut most of it, but I need to go cut this bottom part here. So now I'll put that through. So now look at this. All of these are cut out. And one of the things I like about Pink Fresh and what they do is with their dyes, they even cut out like that. So there's not a lot of white space in there. You can see it cuts it out so detailed. And look how beautiful that is. Beautiful. I'm gonna use these today. This is the tube, what is it, Mike? Tube rows. Tube rows. This is the two rows, but let me just, before I move on, I just want to show you some of the other options. There are tons, like I said, they have a ton. Um, so this is the Rainbow Daisies. They have the stamp set with the sentiments. They have the die that cuts it out and the dies that cut out the sentiments. And you can see this does like these Rainbow Daisy. And again, it, all of these have that foil to it. I don't know if you can see that foil. I wish you could see it because it's really fine detail foil. Super easy, and you can see the beautiful color. This is the Artistic Dahlia. I mean, look at even this tiny little one, so cute. You can see those. But look at this, this looks like, I mean, goodness. I wish I could color like that. Such a great way to get a beautiful result very quickly. Uh, the glass mat that I have, it's in the description below. It's the studio, uh, the Glassboard Studio. It's magnetic, so I've got these magnets that will allow me to, you know, hold a stencil in place or maybe hold a card in place until I glue it down. It's really handy, and I, I really like it. it. Two things here. I have a note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You can use whatever size you want for this. This first card example, I'm doing um, just basic four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And if you're curious about cutting different card sizes and stretching your supplies, to use on different card sizes, check out my last video. My last pre-recorded video it might be helpful to you. I also have a 
um, this is a dotted scallops from Pink Fresh. This is one of those background dyes that does a piercing pattern, but it doesn't cut the outside edge, which I think is really handy because that way you could do it directly on the front of a note card. I think you can kind of see it. There we go. So it's a fun little piercing pattern. Now, as far as what kind of frame you make on the front, you could do a rectangle frame, a circle, a heart. So I have two of the hexagon dies. These are from Pink Fresh also. They sell the stacking hexagon dies. They also sell foil, um, foil plates that you can use with them. So let me see here, get this off my magnet. So what you can do is like cut a hexagon and do a foil, like a foil line right on the inside. Or you can cut the hexagon, do a foil line, and then use the next hexagon inside of that and you have a foiled frame. So there's many things that you can do um, using these. I have used these before in a video several times and I just think they're fantastic. So I'm using just two of the hexagon frames or dies and I'm using two that are close in size so that we can create a frame on the front of our card. All right, so I have that um, frame, the smaller of the two hexagon frames, just taped to the center of that scallop panel. I also have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. I'm gonna hold this on the front of it like this. So I'm gonna hold it on the front. See how I'm just holding it there? I'm gonna lay it into my die cut machine, okay? Now I'll run this through, and this will cut through the panel where we did the scallop dotting, and it'll cut through the front of our note card. All right, so now I'm gonna tape this on the front and we have a fun card front started. I'm gonna use that same hexagon die that we just used, the smaller of the two, and I'll place it down. And then the bigger, the one that's slightly bigger, I'll put around it. So I'm just nesting them together. All right, so notice how I was able to get a nice gold frame. Now remember there were these foil plates that'll let you do different color foils, but this is just another way to add a little bit of shine. But here we go. Okay, I'm gonna put that adhesive around the edge. I could have used liquid adhesive and I'm just gonna glue this on front. So now we have this nice frame for that hexagon. And I'm telling you, I'm doing a lot of hexagon and ovals. If you checked my last video, I did how I talked about how a hexagon or a, an oval is nice in the center of any card size. You can make it work. I feel like a hexagon is that way too. Um, I feel like proportions don't matter as much. So next we need to create our element that will pop up on the inside. I want to use this. Thanks for being there when I needed you most. I really like that Pink Fresh has some sentiments that are a little more unique, a little more like thought-provoking than the basic sentiments, and they have coordinating dies that cut them out. So this is the Thanks for Being There stamp set. I'm gonna use this one on a card today. It's got this beautiful floral. I love the style of this, but right now I'm using the Thanks for Being There. So I'm stamping this with black ink. You could heat emboss this. Uh, maybe gold would look nice with the gold foiling, but I really like the look of the bright black and it stands out with all the color. So now this is going to be what shows here when the card is open and closed. So we need to create the mechanism that does the pop-up. And this is, a you can vary the size. I will show you a few other size variations in the video today or in my next one when I run out of time. Um, but this is a good basic one. Okay, so what I have here is a piece of white cardstock that is one and a half by five. So it's one and a half by five. And I'm going to score it in three places one and a quarter, two and a half, and three and three quarters. So basically your score lines are an inch and a quarter apart. Now you could do um, you know, smaller or bigger. I will show you smaller later, but this is a good basic pop-up size. So now we've got this piece that it, we just created. You can see it kind of folds up into a box. On one flap, I'll put some adhesive. So I put adhesive just on this flap here, just on this side of the score line. And I'm gonna lay that down right up against the inside crease of my card, right towards the center. So it sticks out like this. This is really easy. And once you've done it once, it's so easy to change up to. Okay, so now this all hangs out. 
Now I'm gonna put adhesive. I'm gonna scribble where my adhesive goes so you can see in the video. Like between the, the you know, the width of this, right up to the window. So between here and here, and underneath the window. So I'm gonna put some adhesive there. Liquid adhesive is fine. I'm not using liquid adhesive for now because I don't want to um, have to wait for it to dry. Now this here, I'm gonna fold down in half. So see how the two ends meet up there at the crease of the card, and then I close this adhesive onto it and press it down. So now, see how that pops up? Super easy. Now, what you can do is put adhesive on the top of this little landing we have right here. So I'm gonna put adhesive on the landing. I'd put the adhesive on the landing while the card is closed so you don't put it up too high and glue your card shut. And now I can lay this right in there and it fits in right in the center. And then I press it down there and then push that through. And now you have this fun pop-up. So this is very, um, very simple to create. You can do this with a circle. You could do this with a heart. You could do this with a rectangle whatever shape you want. I just really am loving the hexagon. Oval would be great for this too. Okay, so now decorate this however you want. Really any way that you want. I am going to create using these elements that I just created using the washi tape and dies. Now I'm putting foam tape under this for some dimension. Uh, normally, uh, if I want to save time, I would put, um, I, or if I wanted to spend the time, I would do extra die cuts to glue behind it to make it strong pop up. But just to save time here, I'm just putting foam squares on here. You'll notice I'm not putting many foam squares down. What I'll do is once I get them where I want them, trim off the extras, I'll, extra, I'll go tuck small foam dots, you know, like right along the edges to make sure. Okay, so this one I'm gonna have kind of go right up. I'm, I'm trying to get these to kind of frame my sentiment so that when um, when the you know recipient gets it, this the folk the focus of the floral arrangement will be the sentiment in the middle. And by the way, this is the magnet that works with my magnetic glass mat, and I can just hold it closed because the pop up wants to pop up. It will flatten nicely when you put it in the mail, um, but for now, I want to kind of flatten it a bit. I'm gonna I will go back and add more foam tape under these things later on. All right, so there's that. Now, I thought I'd add some that are a little flat, you know, like behind that aren't popped up. So I'll just take a little adhesive on this one and kind of tuck it to come out down here. Are you laughing about some something? Some wise, wise guy has a question. Kathy says, do you remember the year 2003 when you and Kathy Zinsky were both members of the Creating Fame, Creating Keepsakes Hall of Fame? How do I feel about that? That was just yesterday. Wasn't it? Wasn't that just yesterday? Come on. We're too old for that. We're too old for that. Or too young. Sorry, too young for that. Yes, Kathy and I both entered a contest in a scrapbook magazine, and we won the same year. And we didn't know each other yet. We knew, got to know each other after that. I, I just, she's, I dragged her into the card making world. She was a little hesitant at first, but I ended up getting her there. And I'm glad we did. She's one of the best. So now this one I'm going to glue onto the pop-up thing. So I'm just gonna glue it right here. So it's like right next to that K. And then it peeks out here when the card is closed. But then when you open it, it's adhered up here. Now this one here, I thought this purple was so pretty. I'm gonna have him kind of peek up here, let's see. So I want it to kind of peek up into that bottom of the frame when it's closed. Then when you open it, it stands up. All right, so now I can flip this over and start my chopping. But look at that, isn't that fun? And I did that all very quickly using that washi tape and dye. So I could leave this with shine, but I wanted to show you that um, Pink Fresh has these, I love these, I've used them many times in videos. They're gems, they're clear gems with colored glitter inside. So if you like sparkle that you don't have to worry about rubbing off, these are really a great option and they come in lots of different colors. I'm using the blossom color here. So I did three here, and then I did three here, but really my clusters are like a triangle from there to there to there. And I just find that kind of works. I don't know, works well for me. And it's just an easy way to scatter some gems. So that now has a little bit of some sparkle on there. Isn't that fun? So that's the first card. 
and you can see it, it's fine. And then it pops up, it'll stand up on display, it, all kinds of good things. And when you open it, you have room here to write your personal message. Now this one uses the Thanks for Being There stamp set that I just showed you that I said is one of my, um, one of my favorites because I use that sentiment, but I really love the style of these flowers. It's flowers. Now this one is one of those sets that has, well, one of those collections, I guess I should say, that has um, different options. There is a stamp set, four by six stamp set, coordinating dies, and layering stencils. Now what I did is I started some of this off screen. I just wanted to save some time. So I've already colored three of these. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate one, but for this particular card, you obviously need three. And I did the same coloring on all three, but you definitely, definitely could change it up if you wanted to and do each one a different color. Now this right here, I just wanna tell you what I did here. I gold heat embossed on white cardstock, the flower from the thanks for being there. And I use the coordinating die to cut it out. So I'm gonna grab the first stencil and line it up. So I'll put it right there. This is very easy to line up. This will color that large flower first. I am using Pink Fresh inks today. I've used them many times in videos and I talk about one of the reasons I really like them is because they are jelly bean happy colors. They're the happiest of happy Another thing that I really like about Pink Fresh inks is that they the color kind of um, goes on bold and then it kind of pulls back and dries as it smooth uh, pulls back and smooths as it dries. So you get really beautiful um, color and it's very forgiving. So you will notice that I am not taking a lot of care here to make sure that I'm getting a perfect blend. Now I'm going to come in with Raspberry Bliss and a smaller brush here. And go towards the center. I am not going to do much blending. I just put color down. Now, I put it on pretty heavy too. And what you're going to see, I'm going to lift this off, is it may not look very blended, but these inks will blend into each other with time. All right, so the next one, I'm going to line this up. Okay, so I'm going to put, this is a lighter color. It will lighten as it dries, and I'm just putting down a light application there. Then I will come with a, the darker fruit punch, and I'm just gonna put some dark fruit punch right there in the center. I'm gonna put some of that on the center flowers too. And notice, it's not, I did not take time to blend, and look at that. I'm gonna use sweet mustard. This is a great, um, great yellow. I use this one quite often too. Hit me up with questions as I go here. So this one, I put um, sweet mustard. Then I'm gonna come in with whatever's left over on my brush here. Just put a little darker shade on like part of that circle, just to give it a little, a little bit of shading. All right, then the final stencil. So you can see these are very easy to line up. So this is limoncello and it's like a yellowish green. It's a nice alternative to a bright green. You definitely could do bright green, but I thought with this color palette it'd be fun to change it up. Then I'm coming in with the Spanish moss, and just putting a little bit kind of at the base of the leaves. When I want to put a darker color on my leaves, I kind of follow like the vein that would go up or the stem, and that's where I put the color. So there we have, isn't that cute? I just love that and how it fits nicely like on a circle die too. So you could do a circle pop up, you could do lots of things. Now it's time to create this crazy card base. Now. I'm gonna use a fun ornate frame there. Just to show you, you don't have to use basic dies all the time. I do think basic dies oftentimes are more forgiving, but I wanted to be able to show you can use fun frame dies. I have a five by seven card base. Now, with the technique that I'm doing, I'm using a big die on a big card, and it's not gonna fit through my die cut machine. It'll be too wide. So here's a little trick that I found that I like to do. All right, I am going to cut mo I'm going to cut four inches off the back here. So I'm just cutting one inch from the score line. So the score line's right here at the one inch mark, and I'm going to cut. So I have this funny looking thing here, and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm going to save this. I'm going to use this too. I've used this in a video before also. This is the ornate circle. It does lots of detail with the inside die. Then there's the outside die, so you can use them together or separate. But I'm gonna start here. 
by this will get taped right towards the top center here and it is straight. So now I'm going to open this up and run this through my die cut machine. So by cutting this off, we'll put it back in place later. Now this will fit. So I put adhesive on this flap here and now I can lay this five by seven card panel, just, just a panel in there. So now I formed it back to a five by seven. So this is five by seven. Now there's this here. If this bothers you, it wouldn't bother me. But if it does bother you, you can put some adhesive on the back. And remember the piece we cut off before I said to keep that? You can put that right back in place and you can barely see that seam between. So now we have a nice, strong five by seven card base with a window. Now we need to decorate our little pop-up thing, our little pop-up frame here. Now I'm going to cut these two together to create a white decorative frame. But here's the thing. I didn't want to have to put glue on the back of that detailed frame here on screen. So to save time, I have white cardstock here that I've put Altenew double-sided adhesive on the back of. So you just take the um, Altenews, any kind of double-sided adhesive, put it onto cardstock before you die cut and it turns it into a sticker. So now I'll die cut this. So there was stick, sticky on the back of that frame that I just cut and I'm putting it onto the solid frame all right, so see that the detail? I think that's pretty. Okay, now I did the center of this off screen to save some time. So remember this set that I showed you at the beginning that we did the washi tape here? In it is this You Amaze Me stamp. I've used it a lot, you can tell there. I also like the Always There For You. There is a die that cuts that out nicely. And remember, Pink Fresh cuts into the nooks. Get another hug. See how it cuts even like the centers of the Y and the O. I love that. So anyways, I'm not using the coordinating die today, but I did stamp the You Amaze Me from the Artistic Dahlia set onto a white circle. And it was actually the white circle that came out of this frame. And I matted it onto a gold circle that I cut with a circle uh, die that's slightly bigger. I just looked through my stash. All right, so there we go. That's gonna go in there. Now, it's time to do our little pop-up for this guy but you can write down the measurements to the last pop-up and this one, and it's just two different options. This time, since it's a bigger die cut that's popping up, I made this wider, so it's two inches wide and four inches long, and we're gonna score it one, two, and three inches. So it'll still give us that little pop-up cube, it's just gonna be wider and not pop up as much. But remember, you can go back and write down all those measurements. So I did the four score lines, that one inch, two inch, and three inch, and I'm gonna fold them all in the same direction so it ends up looking kind of like a cube from the side. On one flap here, you can see on to the over from the score line, I put adhesive along that flap. And as before, I'm going to put it up against the crease of the card, kind of centered on the window. So I'm kind of centering it here. It doesn't have to be perfect, really. So I missed it, the crease. So now you can see that flap is glued right up to the crease of the card. See that? So I'll put some adhesive there. You can use liquid adhesive here. You just would need to give it some time to dry. So there's adhesive right there where the black pen is. I'm gonna fold this in half so the two ends meet up there and then press the edge down so that glue gets pressed down onto it. And there's your little pop-up. See that platform there? We're gonna add our frame to it. So I'll put adhesive onto that platform. I'm using more adhesive than I need, but you know, that's what happens. Now I'll take this and fit it into the opening and then push the other side through so that it can open. Make sure it's on there and now look at that. Isn't that fun? So I have these three flowers. I wanted to show you the way that I at, like to do fillers sometime. Like I had these on here and I was like, I felt like they were too separated and I wanted this to be one of those cards that's like kind of over the top. So I wanted some filler in here. One thing that I do a lot is I will white heat emboss on vellum. So you could white heat emboss these images on vellum and cut pieces off from it and kind of tuck them kind of sticking out and it kind of fills in and connects some. But what I decided to do today, instead of doing white heat embossing on vellum, I'm doing a light color stamping on white. 
and I'm going to tuck those coming out and it just adds a little bit of interest. Um, I am using, this is a great fillers stamp set. So this is all kinds of wonderful. This happens to have one of my other favorite pink press sentiments. You can see it's used a lot. I love this. You are all kinds of wonderful. I think that is just such a great sentiment to give to so many people. So here we have the stamp from there and this is one of those where they connect the images so you can stamp them all at once, stencil them in all at once, and then die cut them all at once. And it's great for this particular card design. Now there are layering stencils that allow you to color these in, but I'm not using those today. I'm just using these filler stamped uh, images on this card. Off screen, I stamped that floral image that has the four florals on it. And I stamped it with Warm Buff. And this is something I learned from either Leah or Heather. I think it was Heather um, from Pink Fresh. This is a great, it's a light brown, but when you stamp it, it dries and almost looks like a soft gold. It almost looks like a soft gold. So it matches nicely with gold heat embossing. I could, gold, could have gold heat embossed these flowers, but I felt like it would be too much gold with this card. I wanted something a little more subtle, so I used Warm Buff. Now I'm using the die that coordinates to cut them all out. All right, so now I want one up here, and I'm gonna make sure it'll open if I do that. Yep, it will. So now there's a lot hanging off, so what I'll do is just flip it over and cut off the extra, and I'm gonna keep that extra in case I wanna fill in with these. So you could take these little bits. So we have all these little fillers here. I like to also give them a haircut, because this is too long. I don't need it this long, so I'm gonna just tear it, nobody's gonna see. Put some liquid adhesive kind of at the base of it. This is something I've been inspired by JC Gasper. I did, I did a live with him recently where I kind of only, like I leave the tips unglued so they kind of pop up a little bit and look like they're kind of floating there. So these, you know, this is one of those things. Listen, we're all very different when it comes to crafting. Some people love the, you know, these kind of fillers. Some people, I uh, don't want to take the time to do them, and it's per it's a personal preference. And I don't think any one is right or wrong in their way of doing it. Just, you know, go with what you you feel comfortable doing. And you can also once in a while try things that you normally wouldn't do. You know, try stepping up a card if you normally don't, or try doing a simple card if you normally go over the top. So now there's plenty of place to write a message. Look at how it pulls it all together. And I will go back on this one and add some little gold glitter gemstones, but to save time, I'm gonna skip that right now. Cause I gotta, I got one more, I got one more, here we go. So isn't that fun? So you can see how these fillers that we just put in are very subtle because I used a light ink on white cardstock. There we go, yeah, I added it, there we go. Isn't that fun? So here is where I added some gold glitter gel or glitter uh, gems. You can see I put more on here than normal because it's a bigger card. All right, so let's do this one qu as quick as can be. So you can see here that the front is a little bit shorter than the other. There's a little border here and that heart kind of pops up off the edge. Isn't that fun? So this could be done with a circle, square, whatever you want, but a heart is fantastic. This heart is one of my most used die sets of all time. You've seen it in many videos. There's Shaker Heart dies from Pink Fresh. There's the two in here. And it does a faux stitch line on the inside and the outside, which gives you that faux stitching on the heart and then around the heart too. So I really like the shape of this heart and the sizes, I use them a lot. Okay, so I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding note card. So my first card opened upwards, was top folding. This is a side folding version. And you don't have to cut the front edge off, you could leave it on if you wanted to. All right, so here I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut three quarters of an inch off of the front. So I'm gonna put this in my trimmer here, three quarters of an inch off. There are a few different ways you can do this, but this was the easiest. So now I have a note card where I cut three quarters of an inch off here. You could do more or less. Okay, so I want the heart to be right about there. Open this up and you can see the heart's hanging off the front because we um, trimmed that down. Now we need to do the pop-up feature. I've already created that. Now this um, I made narrow because I wanted to, so you couldn't really see it. See how you can't really see that pop-up there? So I made it narrow because the edge of the heart, I wanted to make sure it didn't show. So the width of this doesn't really matter, but this time I did 
three quarters of an inch by five inches long. I did five inches long on the first card too. And in this case, I'm going to score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarter. So those are all evenly spaced. So that when I fold it up, you can see how it forms kind of a cube. So on one of the end flaps, like always, cover one of the end flaps with adhesive. I'm going to place it so the edge of that flap is right up against the crease on the card. Place that down. So you can see it's sticking out there. Now I want adhesive right here between the width of that piece and up to the window. Okay. How do I store my grip mat? Somebody asked. I, I, my Alta New one, I have, um, I just have it, they, I have an extra chair in my craft room over on this side that usually is unused and I lay it on there. My waffle flower ones, I store, I have one stored in a drawer and I have one that stays in my Misty. Okay, so there, look at that. So there's the pop-up. And then I will, I'm not gonna do it now, but I will end up putting this blue heart onto it. Okay, but we're gonna first add something to that. I'm gonna do the sentiment next. I wanna show you the sentiment just because if I don't take the time to stencil these flowers, I don't have to do that. Okay, so this is one of my, you can tell, this is probably my most used Pink Fresh stamp set of all time. Um, this is a, it's the sentiments that get me. It has all of these sentiments on one stamp, okay? So I off screen white heat embossed those sentiments here. I messed up this one with a fingerprint, but I just white heat embossed them. And the cool thing is, is there's a die that cuts them all out at once. So, so now see, I can have all of these sentiments here. I'm gonna use Hope All as well, but there's the other ones too. Um, the Just a Hello is a great sentiment and I love the Hope All as well. And the sentiment is going to stick off the edge here. See how it suspends? So you see it when it's closed, but then you see the full heart when it opens. So since it's being suspended, since this is a spiller, it's spilling over this, I'm gonna double it up. I don't want that to be weak. And this blue cardstock, I don't trust it. I want it to be thicker, so I die cut a white to put behind it, and now this is stronger. Let's do our little border. I thought it'd be fun to have a little decorative border that peeks out here. So see this decorative border, it has faux stitching. And I thought the faux stitching would be fun to match with the faux stitching on the heart. And this is a much older Pink Fresh background die. Love this. It does all of these faux stitching and it cuts the outside edge. I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. Isn't that pretty? Such a fun background. I'm gonna just trim off three quarters of an inch of this. All right, so I'm putting just this little faux stitching here on the end. Now you could use something heavy or you could use the magnets, but I find something heavy puts pressure along all of it. Then I'm going to take a thin strip of light blue cardstock. This was just a scrap left over from that heart and I'm gonna glue that right along the edge just so there's a little bit of that peeking out too. I just think it's fun to have these little strips of cardstock so they peek out. Now the last element is the flower. I'm gonna do it very quickly. I am using the Pink Fresh Lovely Blooms. This has beautiful full flowers that you can really do a lot of fun ink blending with. So off screen, I white heat embossed the flowers. It's one big stamp. White heat embossed on some light cool cardstock. Let's start with the first one here. I'm gonna do this as fast as possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of layering stencils and stencils that coordinate with images like this because it saves so much time. And I don't know, I'm not a natural at figuring out like what to shade and what to not shade and where the highlight should be. And so like here, it, it's doing it for me. It tells me where all of those elements, you know, all of those areas should go. All right. So again, this was white heat embossed onto light pool cardstock and I inked with blues and greens over it. Look at that, isn't that fun? And I did that pretty quickly thanks to good product design. For this particular card, I'm only using one of the flower clusters, but I have them all left over for another one. So this is the one I'm gonna use. And did you see how it cut those three out really nicely? And it cuts out those little in-betweens too. You know, Doug, some people, um, do not like longer videos. You know, I had somebody a couple years ago who took the time to email me to say, just so you know, if your video is over 30 minutes, I'm gonna give you an automatic thumbs down. I was like, oh, 
thanks. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you don't want to watch, subscribe to my channel because I like longer videos simply because I can teach more. That's just going to always be the, it's just the way I'm at. I am. I struggle with the shorter videos. Okay, so now onto that top platform here. On this top platform here, I'll put adhesive. And then put this into that opening, press down onto that. Now this little stem I need to tuck in. So I'll tuck that down and now look at that. Isn't that fun? I'm gonna put adhesive just kind of behind hope only. I'm gonna lay it so that it kind of comes, sticks out right here. Now here we have our pop-up. Isn't that fun? This one's not dry, so I'm going to set that down, but here's the completed. So the sentiment kind of stays on the front. I did add, you can kind of see a visual triangle there of the gemstones. And then that flower kind of hangs off on the inside. I can go and add these in here if I wanted to. These little ones, you could even have it kind of peek out from the back of the heart. I think I'm going to leave it as is. And there you have another pop-up card. And this one is four and a quarter by five and a half, but you could do it bigger. You don't have to cut that front edge off, but I thought that was a fun, fun change of the technique. All right, there you have three fun pop-up window cards. I hope you give these a try. You really can use them with a lot of basic shape dies and other products you may have on hand. If you're interested in anything I talked about in this video, including that 15% off discount, just check the description below here on YouTube. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos, including the original longer live replay. Thanks for spending this time with me. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.